Okay, I'm gonna shoot this video. Uh, first, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I don't have lots of editing software, things like that. So I just shoot and talk. But I want to talk about uh, there's a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and one of the highly effective habits is begin with the end in mind. So with respect to Division Two, um, I want to talk to you about why materials matter and we're going to begin with the end in mind. Uh, with that, I'm going to go to my main agent. I'm going to log in, and I want to show you some things that will probably make some of your hearts sink a little bit when you see the stuff I have and you look at the stuff that you have. And the difference between the stuff I have and the stuff you have is 40% I have more time in the game than you, probably, if you're watching my video. And it's 60% I know how to leverage that time in the game wiser than you, more effectively, more efficient than you. So, well, here, let's just do this. Let's go in. Hopefully I don't get knocked out of my inventory here every time a character comes by and runs into my agent. But uh, I'm going to go to my gears. I'm going to sort my gears by brand, which they already are. And I want you to look at the shield numbers here, okay? These are expertise levels. These are not proficiency levels. Proficiency is the gatekeeper to expertise. It's the cost of admission. You have to get to proficiency level 10, which is otherwise known as proficient. And when you're a proficient, you'll have a shield with a star icon in the middle of it. Um, if you're not proficient, then you get a different looking shield than this, and it'll have a number between zero and 10, which is the star. You don't actually see the number 10. You'll get the number star. This kind of shield is the expertise level. If you look over here where my mouse is hovering, you'll see that this particular bellstone armory chest piece is giving me plus 12% armor. And that's 12% off of the armor of this piece itself. Okay? That 158k armor it includes the 12% armor. It's The 12% is in addition to that. That's the total amount. So... All of the stuff in my current builds, that's level, that's expertise 13, expertise 12, expertise 13, 12, 13, 14, 14, 13, 13. That one I just picked up, I'm still working on it. 12, 12, 12. Uh, the ones with the recalibration marks on them or the donation marks on them are things I'm working on. The ones with the favorite marks on them, I've invested heavily into them, which is why they're marked as a favorite. Okay. So. This is the end. This is what you're trying to get to. Now, it is more advantageous to upgrade your weapons than it is your gear. So let's look at my weapons. I have a machine gun. This is a stoner machine gun, which has a lot lower damage than this by default. It's down in the 90k range by default. In fact, we can show base damage, turn that on. And, oh, 48k. So the base damage of this stoner is 48k. I am adding 69.5k on top of that from a combination of different things. The specialization that I'm using, the gear that I'm wearing, the bonuses on the weapon, the expertise on the weapon, and a whole host of other things. I am adding 69.5k of damage, which gets me up to a total of 117.5k damage per round on this particular uh, LMG. This is a lower damage LMG. It has a much larger magazine, so that's part of the game balance. But I'm getting 20% damage bonus on this because of the expertise. And all of my other stuff that I'm walking around with, I think the lowest thing I'm walking around with, I have a Harmony that's level 14. I'm about to upgrade that in a little bit. Um, so most of the stuff I'm walking around with is expertise level 15 and higher. Okay, I have other stuff in a stash, some of which has levels on it, some of which doesn't. But the reason that materials matter, the reason that uh, expertise and proficiency matters, the reason that optimization matters, the reason that recalibration matters, is to build builds where every roll is maxed, right? Whatever that means for you, whatever the build means for you, okay? Now, how to get there is expensive. It's expensive in terms of the resources and materials in the game, and it is expensive in terms of time in the game. Okay, so I wanted to shoot this video to show you the why. Now the question 
is, and it will come partly in this video, and it will come partly in other videos, which I will add to a YouTube playlist, um, is how we piece together. And I want you to understand that we're building a spider web. We're weaving individual strands of gameplay into a web, a weave, that is stronger than each of the individual strands. But in all cases, we're trying to maximize your time. Time is always your most valuable resource. You don't know how much time you have. Every second you spend is gone forever. You can't put time in a bank account and withdraw it later and when you want to use it. It doesn't work that way. The person who said time is money is an idiot because money is replaceable and time is not replaceable. So time is infinitely more valuable than money. I can always work a second job or I can stop eating out or I can quit drinking pop and drink ice water. There's a million ways to save money or to get more money. There is zero ways to get more time. The best you can hope for in life or in gaming is to figure out how to accomplish more in the time that you are spending. And every time you iterate the process, you find ways to get rid of the waste and you do more with less time. Do more with less time. That's the best you can hope for. So that's kind of what my specialization is in real life. It's also what my specialization is in game life. Now, I just walked you through my inventory. Now I'm really going to make you sick. Now I'm going to go into my stash. And I want you to just focus on the shields over here. By the way, that's the proficient. This this piece of gear is proficient, but I haven't invested in it, so it has no expertise. But all of these pieces of gear with an 11 in them, that means I have spent the resources to raise that individual copy of that individual piece of gear up to expertise level 11. Those were just my mask. Here are my chest pieces. I think pretty much all my chest pieces are level 11, and I have multiple copies of multiple brands, and every single one of them, if you look over here at the rolls, every single one of them is max rolls, okay? Now, the exception to the rule is anytime you see something marked as donation, that means I'm considering working on it, and all the stuff, uh, and, and the stuff I am working on, I've, I've already moved it over to my inventory for now because I'm about to walk to the recalibration table. So I mark things as recalibrate if I'm actually working on them. By the way, the mark is donation. When, when you go to mark something, let me take that mark off really quick. When you go to mark as something, you have three options. You have favorite, donation, and recalibration. Mark as donation used to have a purpose if you were playing the game between X, uh, level 1 and level 30, the original world tier content of DC before the Warlords of New York DLC was released. Um, there used to be projects where you donated so many knee pads and so many holsters or whatever to get some experience and some other payouts. And once you went to Warlords of New York, those types of projects go away. So the mark is donation really has no purpose once you've gotten Keener's Watch and you come back to DC. Mark for favorite is, it will not be, any if any of these three marks, mark is favorite, mark is donation, or mark is recalibration, is applied to a piece of gear or applied to a weapon, it cannot be deconstructed until you take the mark off or the game will prompt you at a minimum. And you can't sell it at the vendor without being prompted and everything else, right? So, so it's a safeguard against deleting, selling, or deconstructing a weapon or a piece of gear. I use these as a system to tell me what I'm doing with the weapon or the piece of gear. So if I mark something as a favorite, it means I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep it. I've already invested in it, and it has God rolls. There are nothing to improve on it with the exception of I may recalibrate a particular attribute or a talent on it that if I want to change it in the future. But, but it is a good piece of gear. I'm ready to use it in the build. I don't have to invest any more resources in it. That's what that means to me when something is a favorite. I suggest you use it as, as such. Mark for recalibration is this is what I'm working at. This is an item I'm working at at the recalibration table. I either need to optimize some roles I need to recalibrate a role, changing one attribute to another or changing one talent to another. That's what recalibration is for. Or I want to invest in it to give it expertise so that I either get 1% weapon damage per expertise level from a weapon or 1% armor bonus from an expertise level on a piece of gear. All right, so that's what these marks are for. So it's kind of a categorical system that I use. So this particular 
by the way, you got to make sure you know where your mouse is. Okay, so this particular mask here, if we look at it, you'll see that I have optimized two slots and I have recalibrated one slot. By default, the brand Barrazos de Arcabus comes with armor as a core attribute and I have replaced it with a skill to, because I believe in trying to synergize my builds one way or another. I have two types of builds, highly focused builds that focus on a single thing or intentional hybrid builds that focus on two things. All right, I, if you try to focus on three things, you've essentially focused on nothing. So this is kind of a, 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 a tweener. I, I kept a copy of, I have a Brazos up here. Look, I have a couple of them. Let's start with that. Let's start with why do I have multiple copies? Well, this copy is the one that has skill damage and skill haste, which synergizes well with skill haste up here as a set bonus and skill tier. And I have used recalibration to take off the armor that would normally be the core attribute, and I've put skill tier in its place. So this is the only slot I can change going forward. Once you recalibrate a slot, you can recalibrate that same slot again and again and again. So if I wanted to, I could change that to weapon damage, I could change it to armor, or after I change it to either of those two, I could change it back again to skill tier. As many times as I want, it costs me a small amount of resources to do it. Optimization works differently. Optimization is whatever this role was when I picked it up on skill haste or skill damage, optimization is I improve the role, eventually getting to the max role. Once you optimize a slot, you can no longer recalibrate the slot. Once you recalibrate a slot, you can no longer optimize the slot. So you have to be very careful when you pick up pieces of gear, you have to choose which slots you want to keep with whatever attribute or talent they have and which slot you might want to change. You only get to change one to make it something different. Now, in the case of Brazos the Arcabus, which normally comes with armor as a core attribute, I almost never want armor as the core attribute because it's a, to me, it's a skill tier build. All right, it's got skill haste, it's got skill tier. So I'm gonna want things like skill tier up here as a core attribute. Now, if I wear two pieces of Brazos the Arcabus, with two pieces of Brazos, I will get three skill tiers, provided I have recalibrated the core attributes of both to make them skill tier, I will get a bonus skill tier right here in the set bonus. So it's a good way to cram a lot of skill damage into a build. And since I'm probably trying to get skill damage in a build, I'm probably interested in skill damage bonus and skill haste bonus so that I can, you know, if it's a seeker mine, I can throw it more often. Or if it's a uh, stinger hive or something like that. Now, I have multiple copies of it because each one tweaks a little bit different. Because I can, because with Brazos the Arcaboose, I, ha, I have chosen to always recalibrate the core attribute, it means I can't be flexible with the secondary attribute. So that means I gotta keep multiple copies of the brand for different situations. If I, for example, this copy is skill damage with status effects, and then of course I've redone the calibration to give me skills here. So that's why I keep that copy. The second copy is skill damage and skill haste. In this build, I don't care about status effects. I just care that my skills come off cooldown quickly and that they do a boatload of damage, probably an explosive build uh, rather than stinger hives with bleed uh, status effect. And this last one, this is an intentional tweener. This is where I want to combine some weapon damage with some skill damage. Maybe I'm not going for skill tier 6, but if I cram a couple pieces of Brazos de Arcaboose into a build, I can get a couple skill tiers and my skills will do a little bit more damage, but I'm not sacrificing weapon damage. And in such a scenario, because I have used recalibration in the core attribute, that lets me flex this. If I want to change that to weapon damage for a particular version of a build, I will be able to change skill tier to weapon damage. Or if I prioritize the additional skill tier, I can leave it as it is and apply it as a skill tier. So that's why I have three copies. Now I'll probably will never pick up another Brazos the Arcaboose mask and keep it because I have all three scenarios that I would want to do. I'm either going to want skill damage with status effects, skill damage with skill haste, or skill damage with some critical hit damage. Uh, I, I guess you could have a copy with skill damage or headshot damage, but I rarely find myself doing a headshot build with skills. I almost always do crit hit builds with skills. That's the way I play the game. You'll make different choices. So all three of these are keepers. This one here I'm going to work on and I'm gonna mark it as this because that tells me I'm in the process. It's not upgraded yet. It's not level 11 expertise. I have more resources to invest in it. So I put the cross tools on it 
and uh, for the moment I'm going to move it to my inventory because it's one of the ones that I may I may actually upgrade it while I'm in this video I don't know I got to look and see what my priorities are but the reason I'm shooting this quick little video is to show you this is what you're working toward you're working toward a library so here's some things I'm considering working on I'm considering making this red for weapon damage and I'll have critical hit chance I'll have weapon handling but I can slam an easy 10% status effects into a build by just putting this mask on there and I, I'm gonna probably recalibrate that to red so this is kind of a flex piece I'm considering and the reason why I marked it as donation instead of market as recalibration is I'm considering this I'm not doing it so when I choose what to optimize right now I, I will skip this piece the reason why I keep this piece is this is the best version, the best copy that I've been able to pick up off the battlefield with this. But let me tell you the one I would really like. If I find an electric mask that has critical hit chance and critical hit damage, that's the copy I really want to keep. But I haven't found that copy yet. This is the best copy I found. So this is the one I'm keeping for now. But I'm not going to spend any resources for a few weeks. I have other things I can upgrade, but I keep this copy in my stash because that tells me I'm looking for one of these and I'm looking to make it all red. I want, eventually, I want one with all three attributes to be red, but the combination I'm looking for is weapon damage as a core attribute, critical hit damage as a secondary attribute, critical hit chance as a secondary attribute, and then I can add the status effects. And that will go nicely with any SMG or assault rifle, you know, like St. Elmo's engine, which has the shock rounds on it, or any, anything that does a status effect. And if I can combine it with maybe ongoing directive, which does the hollow point bullets, right, which applies a bleed effect, then I can get myself a really good tweener build. But I won't be able to work on that build until I find the copy of a piece of electric that has critical hit chance and critical hit damage. This one here, if I can't find another one in a pinch, I could use this one. So I'm keeping it here. I put something in my stash. I mark it as donation. It says I'm looking for a copy similar to this, but this isn't the best copy. I think I can pick up something better off the battlefield. I'm going to hold out hope, but I'm not going to destroy this one. I'm not going to donate this one. I'm not going to sell this one. I'm not going to deconstruct this one until I get a better one. This one's a placeholder for something I'm looking for. So that's what I use Mark for donation for. And down here on the Empress International one, uh, obviously, I, Empress is a skill build on kind of thing. This has got skill damage, skill haste, but the rolls are kind of low, and it's kind of easy to pick Agent this up uh, off the battlefield. So I'm looking, I'm, I'm holding out hope for a better copy. Um, but in a pinch, I could, if this is the only copy I ever pick up, then I could always use optimization. But I'm not going to invest resources now. I have higher priorities. So I'm just going to quickly scroll through, and if you pay attention over here, all these shields have numbers in them. I've already upgraded all of these, and they all have max rolls, every single one of them. They've been optimized. They've been recalibrated. You'll see a few that I've, I, I'm, I'm considering working on. This one here, I recalibrated this to tell myself what I wanted to do, but I'm not ready to apply the expertise. I don't use a Zena Getica, but if I ever want to make a really good armor on kill build, uh, with Ninja Backpack, this would be a good piece to shove in there because I can get this armor on kill. And I can also put a piece of Bellstone in there and get armor regen and armor on kill. And that's an idea for a build I have. But I'm just kind of gathering the pieces. But it, So I'm always picking up good pieces, interesting pieces. Some pieces, this one here looks like it might it, it ended up with a god roll and the weapon damage. But the status effects is low and the skill damage is low. But I actually want a piece of Walker Harris with both skill damage and status effects. Why, when the bonuses up here look like they're red, it looks like a red set? Well, because of the secret sauce. The secret sauce is damage to armor applies to all damage, not just your bullets out of your weapon. It applies to hand grenades. It applies to artillery rounds. It applies to specialization weapons. It applies to fire and shock and bleed and all the other things that can do damage. So if I could get a couple pieces of uh, status effects damage and skill damage and I can get a couple pieces with damage to armor damage to health and damage to target out of cover these are multiplicative damage bonuses and they actually amplify damage really quickly so for this copy of this I'm looking for one with a good roll of status effects I'm looking for one with a good roll of a skill damage 
And I'm going to use recalibration on this slot right here. I may make it weapon damage, but I might make it skill tier because I'm trying to get the magnification of the damage to armor into a skill build. And I'll get some weapon damage up here. It'll just be a token amount. That's assuming I'm wearing two pieces of Walker Harris, of course. So everything in my stash, I have a plan for. The ones that are marked for donation, the plan isn't as far along. Backpacks are a little harder. I have a lot of backpacks. You end up you should end up keeping more copies of backpacks and, and chess pieces, both of these. Let's bounce over the chess pieces because there's different things. Here, look at my group of Samba. I've got four group of Samba chess pieces here. Well, the reason why I have four is, remember I said we can only recalibrate one slot, right? Well, on a chess piece or a backpack, we have a talent to worry about. So if I had my choice, I want to pick up a copy of a chess piece or a backpack with all three attributes being the correct attributes that I want. I don't care so much about the roles because I can use optimization to maximize the roles, but I want to be flexible with the talent. Now, I've marked this first backpack as donation. This one I've had a long time. I picked this up before they ever added expertise to the game. I picked it up before they added optimization to the game. I picked it up before the only thing we had was recalibration. So it wasn't even a max critical hit damage roll. It was like 10% or something like that. And I used critical hit chance and it had the talent I wanted. Well, the problem is over time, I've invested a lot of resources in this thing and I don't want to throw it away. Um, I use it on my alternate agent and I, I have a color coded die slot here that tells me I use it on, not on my main agent, but on my backup agent. Um, so it's an alternate piece of gear, but this is not an ideal copy of this chess piece. And the reason why it's not an ideal copy, let's look at what an ideal copy would be. If you look at the set bonuses, you'll see that critical hit damage is your first set bonus and then explosives and then headshot. Most people only wear one piece of Grupo. They're usually after critical hits. So that tells me this is a critical hit build, a red build, a weapon damage build. So the ideal piece would come stock with weapon damage, which it does. All pieces of Grupo do. It would come with critical hit damage like this one does. And it would come with critical hit chance organically. This one didn't. It came with a different role, and I used recalibration to change it to critical hit chance. Now, it's good enough for me farming because I tend to wear unbreakable all the time. But an ideal copy would have had critical hit chance here that would have been either God rolled to begin with or optimized. And I would have used recalibration to put the talent on that I want because then if I wanted to alter my build in the future and use a different talent, I could recalibrate the talent. This copy, I can only recalibrate the critical hit chance. I could change that to something else, but I cannot change the talent. So this particular chess piece isn't good, which is why I've marked it as donation, not as favorite. It tells me this is not a favorite one. Do not invest any more resources in this. It's a waste. Now let's look at the other copies. Down here is my copy of the same chess piece. But I have all three damages, weapon damage, headshot damage, critical hit damage, and I have used recalibration to change the talent, which allows me in the future, if I say, well, I don't want to use unbreakable. Maybe I want to use uh, a, a different talent, and I can't think of one off the top of my head that goes on a chess piece, but uh, whatever that talent is, uh, pummel comes to mind or something like that, something to do with crit hits. The more crit hits you land, the more your weapon damage goes up. That would be a good alternative to uh, unbreakable. If, if I have the talent name correct. So, the, but I have the flexibility. So, all right, what's this third chess piece? Well, this third chess piece is the one that I said would be ideal. Critical hit chance, critical hit damage, weapon damage. Now this is a true crit hit build copy. This one's different. It's got both damages, headshot damage and critical hit damage. So less emphasis on the critical hit chance, more emphasis on the damage output. Maybe I wear this one with a coyote mask or something like that to get the critical hit chance up. This one here, I'm relying on the chess piece to provide a little bit of critical hit chance into the build. And again, the talent is flexible. Now I got another copy down here and this one's different. This is, and notice I marked this as donation, which tells me don't invest any resources in it right now, but just consider it for a build. And you'll see that I kept a copy and the rolls aren't very good. If I found a copy with better rolls, I might work on this. But the intention was, is to do a tweener build where I have weapon damage and critical hits and skill damage. 
So it's a it's a tweener build where it's part skill damage, part uh, weapon damage. Now this is not the best copy. The best copy would come with critical hit damage, and it would come with skill damage, and it would of course come with weapon damage, and ideally it would come with higher rolls than this, and then that would free me up to change the talent with uh, recalibration. So that's why I haven't invested anything in this chess piece. It's like, well, this is an idea I have. I'm looking for a copy with stuff like this. This is the best one I could find up until now, but it's not good enough for me to be motivated to waste a bunch of resources in optimizing it and recalibrating it yet. So I'm using it as a placeholder in my stash as kind of a, hey, see if you can find a better version of this. But I'm showing you all this stuff, and you'll see, look at all these things that are level 11. And, and some of them are level 12, right? And we get down here. In, in chess pieces and backpacks, I will have multiple copies of every brand. And, and I mean, it's because... All of these have a flexible talent, every single one of them. I haven't recalibrated anything on this yet, but I can recalibrate the talent. Same thing with this one. I have recalibrated the talent. This one here, I haven't recalibrated anything, but it, the intention is to recalibrate the talent. And these are two copies of Sacrifice. One of them is going to be a red version of Sacrifice. Weapon damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, perfect glass cannon. The other one's going to be a skill copy. Weapon damage, skill damage, skill haste. Perfect Blast Cannon. Now, this is not the best copy. I have not ever found a copy of the Sacrifice that came organically with both skill damage and skill haste. If I did find one, I would immediately go up here and recalibrate this to skill build because adding this kind of damage to a skill build is insane. And I can always use Picaro's holster to squeak an extra uh, skill tier in there and some weapon damage. But I kept two copies of these. These were good enough. One was for the red. One was for the tweener, and that's why I have four copies of Providence chess pieces. If I want to put in a build, Providence, by the way, is one of the best brands to sneak some damage into any build. Headshot damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage. Works with any weapon. So it's, it's, a, it's a good all-arounder yellow set. Walker Harris is another one. You'll see I got several copies. But all of these are upgraded. I have spent hundreds of thousands of materials so I'm giving you the why we do things. Now, I'm not. this video is not going to cover the how we do it. It's going to cover the why we do it. And, and I can go into any one of these categories and show you tons and tons of gear. I can also go into weapons. And like here's a Merciless that's upgraded to level 10. I keep multiple copies of machine guns, same kind of thing. I want either, I usually want the talents flexible, but I might want one with damage to armor. I might want one with critical hit chance. I might want one with critical hit damage, but all of them, the talents are flexible. But you'll see I haven't invested any resources in upgrading these because I don't run with these machine guns. Um, I'm focusing mostly on my named ones. I have a few that are not named and not exotic that I love to play with. Those I've invested in. The regular ones that I don't play with much, I just keep them. All of these have god rolls. They're all optimized. I, I haven't recalibrated most things. You can see I like LMGs. I also like marksman rifles. I just upgraded all three of these last week. Here's one, two, three, four, five. Five copies of an M700 Carbon. Every single copy, you don't have to look and see what the rolls are over here. Every single copy is max rolls, either organically or I spent optimization on them. The difference between them is what the secondary attribute is. So if you just focus on the secondary attribute as I go up and down, one has optimal range, one has stability, which is good on marksman rifles, one has magazine size, one has damage to target out of cover, one has damage to armor. And all of them are flexible in what the talent is. I usually put ranger on a marksman rifle, which gives you a damage bonus uh, the further away from a target you are. So I like the M700. Um, I don't use it as much because my main... This is my main beast of a marksman rifle. It's the custom M44. And I used to, before they added Determine to the game, I used to run with Ranger here. But the beauty of this weapon is, uh, and this isn't the right build. Here, I'll put a sniper build on. Same weapon, but different build. And you'll see that the accuracy and the stability are both max rolls. And you'll see that the damage drop off. This is the 80 meter mark right here. 90 meters would be right here. So, so one tenth of this bar is 10 meters, right? 
Um, so my damage doesn't drop off until after 80 meters. So whether you are one meter away from me or 80 meters away from me, I'm hitting you with full damage and I'm doing it with a weapon that is 100% accurate, 100% stable, and it's been expertise level 17. So one shot from this weapon in this build, the first shot is worth a million damage. The base damage was this and here's all the modifiers. And on the subject of looking for gear, Hadsburg is a gear they added to the game relatively recently, several months ago, uh, when I'm when I'm recording this. Hadsburg by default comes with a blue core attribute of armor, but you'll see that I farmed long and hard. I waited till I picked up a copy of this mask that had headshot damage organically, weapon damage organically, and I used recalibration to change the blue core to a red core, and I used opt. I didn't care how high these rolls were. That's not important. You'll hear me say this all the time. If you talk to me in the game, I'll say it a million times. It is more important to get the right combination of roles rather than God roles. It doesn't matter if you get God roles if the three attributes don't synergize with the set bonuses of the piece. Let's say that this came with the blue... Uh, plus 170,000 armor, and it was a god roll. Great, it's a god roll. And this one came with skill haste, and it was a god roll. And this one came with protection from explosives, and it was a god roll. Well, you got a, you got a piece of gear with three god rolls, but those three god rolls have nothing to do with headshot damage from the set bonus or marksman rifle damage from the set bonus. So more important is that these secondary attributes and that these core attributes align and synergize with these set bonuses. That way you're compounding bonuses on the same type of thing so that when, in this case, when I shoot someone in the head with a marksman rifle, I am doing, with respect to this mask, the maximum amount of damage that this mask could inflict or add to a build. Because I have removed the armor from the core attribute, replaced it with 15% weapon damage, and I found a copy that had 10% headshot damage. Well, I made it 10% with the optimization, but I found one that had headshot damage to begin with, organically, and then I found one that had weapon handling. Weapon handling, by the way, if you're not sure what that is, it's four things rolled into one. It is reload speed, which there's two types of reload. There's on a marksman rifle, every time you chamber a new round, that is a reload. And uh, it's very slow because all your marksman rifles have a bolt action. They don't have magazines that automatically feed a round up into the chamber. The shooter has to eject the old cartridge by pulling a bolt back. The cartridge ejects and then they they move it to the side and they push it forward and it scrapes another round off the magazine and chambers it into the weapon. It is a slow fire reload process. Weapon handling means reload speed. Now the other type of reload speed is when your magazine is dry, taking the magazine out of the weapon and putting a new magazine that is full of rounds in the weapon is also a reload. Sniper rifles have two reloads. They've got the slow reload between bullets and then they got the magazine reload when the magazine is dry. All weapons have the magazine reload, but every other type of weapon in the game is automatically fed from their magazine or a revolver, of course, from the cylinder. But the sniper rifles in the game are bolt-action fed, so weapon handling is of premium value on a sniper rifle build. The other three aspects of weapon handling include weapon stability. So when you see 8% weapon handling, that also means 8% stability. When you see 8% weapon handling, it also means 8% accuracy. When you see 8% weapon handling, it also means 8% swap speed. You can swap from your primary weapon to your secondary weapon or your sidearm quicker. And it, that is also very important for a sniper build because a sniper wants to use a marksman rifle and he wants to shoot people from a distance and he wants to shoot them in the head. But in certain PVE scenarios, all of a sudden there's a bunch of rushers coming at you and you don't want to shoot a target at close range through a scope. You, you're you not going to be able to hit them. The scopes are designed to shoot people from a long range, from a safe distance, behind cover. If you're being bum rushed, you want to be able to swap away from that marksman rifle very quickly to something like a submachine gun, assault rifle, or a pistol that you can shoot them quickly at, at, at close range. So when you look at, uh, if you were to look focus your your eyes right here where my mouse is moving and i go through all six of these whoops all six of these pieces in the build let me scroll down a little bit you'll see they all six have headshot damage and all all of them have weapon handling 
So I'm getting the maximum headshot damage out of this sniper build, and I'm also getting the maximum weapon handling out of this sniper build. And I have two pieces of Hadsburg. This is the knee pads you're looking at right now. And I waited till I found a copy with headshot damage and weapon handling, and I used recalibration to remove the armor, and I put weapon damage in it. So the reason why I'm showing you all this isn't to brag about my build so much. Your builds will be different. They'll be tailored to how you like to play the game. But what will make them effective is these concepts I'm talking about. You want to find gear that synergizes with your intention of the build, and you want to make sure that you're utilizing the right part of the game to upgrade your gear. You use recalibration when you want to change something from what it was to what you want it to be. Or also from what you want it to be for this version of the build to what you want, might want it to be for some other version of the same build where you're tweaking your build. So think of recalibration as a switch hitter. Maybe I want him batting right, maybe I want him batting left. It depends on the pitcher that he's going up against in the baseball game. It's the same kind of thing here with these weapons, uh, with, with these attributes, okay? Um, optimization you want to use when the scenario is I've got the right attribute in the light, right slot but it's just not a god roll okay fine spend the resources do the farming then the grinding get enough resources optimize the slot now you get the piece of gear that you want and in this particular build uh, just to walk you through the rest of it in case you have any questions I've got two pieces of Hadsburg which gives me the headshot damage and the marksman rifle damage I've got two pieces of Air Aldi, which gives me marksman rifle damage and headshot damage. So that's two sets, and I got two pieces of each. I wear the named item, Chain Killer, which gives me the perfect headhunter talent. Each headshot does so much more damage than the previous one. And the base uh, uh, set bonus damage is weapon damage, so my sniper rounds do a hell of a lot more damage. And, of course, you see I've got headshot damage everywhere. In the mods, mod chips... All three mod chips I'm using headshot damage and then uh, the other item is my backpack I am using a Providence defense which the first bonus is headshot damage so on a yellow sniper build using no green gear at all this is the most damage you can get whether you're shooting your TAC 50 or you're shooting whatever your favorite marksman rifle is and the marksman rifle of course I've got the the uh, determined on it after killing an enemy with a headshot the next shot landed on any enemy will be a guaranteed headshot so even if you shoot him in the arm the leg or whatever it'll be a headshot but because a chain killer every time after killing an enemy with a headshot your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals an additional 150 percent of the killing blows damage so these two skills combine and they they amp up the damage into the tens of millions really quickly so anyway this is the end the end, the objective, what you're after. When you want to build your badass builds, whatever that means for you, you're going to need the gear. You're going to need gear with optimized roles. You're going to need gear with the correct combination of roles. And you're going to need gear if it has a talent, like a backpack or a chest piece or a weapon. You're going to need a gear with the right talent. But it's going to cost you a ton of resources. Now, I want to show you... I'm going to jump into, uh, actually, I guess I will jump back into inventory. And I'm going to go to Keener's Watch. And I'm going to go in here to the scavenger points, and I want to show you things. Okay? Now, I'm not running on empty. Right now, I'm running on approximately 40% across the board, except for credits, of course. My, I am very light on credits. Um, I always keep some materials. Part of the reason why I always keep some materials is every week the game drops a project, which I've already completed for this week. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting this video on a Tuesday night, but it's not quite server reset yet. But if I go into projects, we have this, shade, uh, this weekly shade requisition project, which is you donate 500 of three different materials. You donate 500 of either protective fabric or receiver components, and then you donate... Uh, 250 of either water components or food and for your trouble you get one exotic cash all right and when you open up the exotic cash it could be any exotic that drops in the open world or any exotic that you have picked up the original hard way which means that that exotic will now drop for you not necessarily another player in the open world so that gives you exotic resources and exotic resources are important for expertise. 
So let me show you the why. Again, now we're getting into the whys. I'm going to go into expertise, and I'm going to pull up my marksman rifles that I have right now. And remember that custom M44? I have a custom M44, which is level 17 expertise. Look down here. Here's the cost to get it to level 18. It will cost me 29 field recon data. It will cost me 16 shade calibration. All right. And it will cost me eight exotic resources to take this weapon from level 17 expertise to level 18 expertise. And for this cost, I will get an additional 1% weapon damage on that weapon. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that yet because I have a number of items that are lower expertise level than 17. Let me see if I can find one of those really quick. Uh, my lowest weapon is the White Death is a 15. My Harmony is a 14, which is a rifle. So let's go back in here and let me show you the rifle. We'll go to Rifles. We'll find that Harmony. I'm actually going to upgrade this in front of you. So you can see what goes on, because this was one of the things I want to upgrade. Now, this one doesn't cost seven or eight exotics. It only costs five. It'll cost 20 field recon. It'll cost 10 shade calibration. And it'll cost five exotic resources. Now, this is my lowest weapon that I carry of all the loadouts that I keep on my agent. This is my lowest weapon. Currently, I have a policy where I upgrade my lowest weapon first. The reason is, is I've pushed a lot of my favorites. Let me go into my thing here really quick. The ones that go in my builds, like I use Pestilence a lot. I already have it, Expertise Level 20. I use my Stoner LMG, wherever it is. My Stoner LMG. I use it a lot. I already have it at Expertise Level 20. I use this Marksman Rifle a lot, but I don't use it as much as I use the LMGs. So that's why I'm keeping that at 17. I have to look at the frequency that I take a shot with a marksman rifle versus the frequency I take a shot with a machine gun. Anybody who's in my clan that farms with me knows I'm almost always spraying the machine gun at the enemy. Occasionally, I'll take a headshot. So it behooves me to push my machine guns up a little higher. And in some builds, namely a skill build, because the Harmony, if you didn't know, has perfect in sync on it. So I shoot someone with this and I get 20% skill damage. So I wear the Harmony in a skill build, so I'm shooting people with a rifle. And I do shoot the rifle a lot because that's what allows me to use perfectly in sync and get 20% skill damage. And by the way, the, the secret sauce... Damage increases are doubled when both buffs are active at the same time. So this plus 20% skill damage actually becomes plus 40% skill damage if I keep shooting the rifle. Well, since I'm going to keep shooting the rifle, then I should upgrade this rifle. So when to choose what to upgrade, you have to look at your play style. You have to look at the frequency that you're going to use that weapon, the frequency that you're going to use that piece of gear, and the value that you're going to get for the cost that you're going to spend. Lately, I've been noticing that this rifle doesn't hit very hard, and if I could get 1% more damage, that would help. So that's the one I'm going to upgrade right now with the resources I have. So I want to show you that I want to show you the before and the after, and I wanted to capture it on video, and I hope the sound turns out on this video because I'm only going to get one shot at this. But I'm about to consume 5 exotic resources, 10 shade calibration, and 20 field recon data. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to see what the next cost is. Which I can't afford at the moment because I don't have enough field recon data. So now it's going to cost me, instead of 20 field recon data, it's going to cost me 22 for the next to go from 15 to 16. And instead of 10 shade calibration, it's going to cost me 12. And instead of 5 exotic resources, it's going to cost me 6. Now, fortunately, I got the exotic resources because I focus on farming those. But this is how you creep your gear up, and it's an expensive process. So we got to get good at farming field recon data. We got to get good at farming shade calibration. We got to get good at farming exotic resources if we ever want to upgrade our weapons above, and just so you know, above expertise level 10. Uh, I have some other stuff in here. I have some expertise. I forget the brands. I think there's an electric here. Yeah, I'm working on this electric. So this this is a holster. And uh, 
every expertise level is going to give me 1% damage. And the reason why I'm doing this, you'll notice that my protective fabric is at 9,999. I was just out on the map. I just picked up a bunch of stuff. I deconstructed it, and I noticed I only got a couple hundred protective fabric. Normally, I get a few thousand uh, when my backpack's full. And it's like, oh, I must be at the max for protective fabric. So I'm shooting this video at, after having done a bunch of control points. And now I'm going to burn off some resources. Now, there are people in chat in this game, they'll say, it's not worth it to upgrade your gear. Because you're only going to get 1% armor bonus off of just this one piece of armor. And I'm going to work on this. I'll optimize these things. Uh, in fact, I got other ones. I'm not, this one needs optimization. So I knew I had an electric piece. Let me see. Let me do something really quick here. Show me the stuff. Sort it by things that aren't in the loadouts last. So I got a Chesker Vroba with no expertise. I can upgrade that. I got a Brazos de Arcabus. These ones I need to invest. I always complete the optimization and the recalibration before I do expertise. So this one I will do expertise on. So I got a Cheska Broba to look for. I got a Brazos de Arcabus to look for. That one needs work. This Golem one, I wanna do this Golem one. All right, so those are the three I'm gonna look for. So, sorry, I had to look to see what I was gonna upgrade. So now I'm gonna scroll down to Golem. Golem, Golem, Golem. Where's Golem? And here's that knee pad, okay. Yep, there's the knee pad. All right, so watch this. I want you to watch this because when you look in my inventory, you look at my stash, you saw an army of pieces of gear that were all level 11 or 12 or 13 in some cases. That's a lot, and it looks like it's a task you may never reach. But let me watch. Let me, let me show you something. You'll see that I got 5,600 polycarbonate, 4,449 um, carbon fiber, and 9,999 protective fabric. And I'm gonna be able to take this piece of golden gear from no expertise at all, right in front of your eyes, and take it all the way to level 11, and watch what happens to my resources while I do it. So, this is why we collect resources. Now, if this was in a build, I would have to do this six times to get a full armor bonus of plus 1%, right? Or, I'm sorry, plus 11%, because I'm going to expertise level 11. Okay. Now, I finally got to the point where I'm low on field recon data. So, Keener's Watch, if I got any points, I can come down here, and I can spend those five points on field recon data, and that will actually get me 10. You see this current value? It's 10. You get two field recon data. This is why, by the way, I'm showing you this so you can kind of see how the flow of things go. Whoops, I can't show you there anymore because I can't go back in there without any points to spend. So when I started this video, this shade calibration was in the 400s and this was like 70 or 80 or whatever. And you just saw me burn through a bunch. So you, you can see where I'm at in the game, I will burn more field recon data than anything because I'm constantly upgrading expertise levels. And I'm always spending field recon data. And I'm spending more field recon data than shade calibration. If you're at the point of the game where you're optimizing, though, and I think that, uh, was that a mask? Nope. It was knee pads. Nope. Holster. Okay. Here's a holster I want to upgrade. I've already done some optimization down here in the skill damage. That's a bad, that's a bad version. I'm not sure what I want to do with that. The electric one. Yes, the electric one. Okay. So I know I want status effects. But I'm going to recalibrate. I might recalibrate this to red. So I'm not going to do this. But I'm going to upgrade both of these. So I'm going to start with the status effects one. So I want to show you the cost. See that little green part right here? This little green part is only going to increase it from 8.9%, which is what the current roll is, to 9%. It's going to get up to the next point. And I'm going to spend 13 holster weave, 7 field recon data, 4 tactical assessments for um, Rikers, and 3 shade calibration. That's just to get a tenth of a percentage point. I'm going to spend that right in front of you so you can see it. 
And now I'm going to go back into the same one. And now to get the next, what is it, half a percent? To go from 9% status effects to 9% status effects, I don't have enough field recon data. But look what it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me 70 weave for the holster. It's going to cost me 37 field recon data. It's going to cost me 23 shade calibration. And it's going to cost me 14, I'm sorry, uh, 23 uh, Riker tactical assessment. And it's going to cost me 14 shade calibration. Okay. Now, let me change all this. Remember I said time was your most valuable commodity? Let me express all these in terms of time. Okay. How long will it take you to pick up 70 holsters off the battlefield and deconstruct them? That's a lot of farming. You could go out for an entire day and not pick up 70 holsters in one day because you're gonna pick up backpacks and masks and knee pads and weapons and a whole bunch of other stuff. So to get 70 holsters is gonna take some time, okay? 37 field recon data. If you farm a control point that is level four, otherwise known as heroic, it will pay you four field recon data for capturing the control point. In addition to that, if you were to do that control point with your map set to heroic and four directives, the payout, the big pile of experience at the end of the control point would be approximately 775,000 experience and one shade level is 700,000 experience. So the payout at the end of the control point would essentially be one shade level or one scavenger point. And you just saw me a few moments ago spend one scavenger point and get two field recon data. So for capturing one control point, counting the shade level that I spend, assuming my Keener watch is above shade level 1000, where every point of shade after 1000 is always a scavenger point. If you're below 1000, only every fifth point is a scavenger point. So this is why I always tell people, get to shade level 1000. The game gets so much faster and you'll improve so much quicker if you get to shade level 1000. It's about unlocking the power of scavenger points because we need the field recon data. We need the shade calibration. We need all of these materials. And the way we're going to do it is Keener's Watch. I'll get more into how we do it in another video, but I want to get, I want to stress to you the why so you understand the why right now. So... I need 37 field recon data. Divide that by six. Remember, one control point will give me four field recon data for capturing the control point. But it'll also give me enough experience to gain a shade level on my Keener watch that I can use as a scavenger point to buy an additional two field recon data. So by the time I'm farming one, done farming one control point, I will be able to spend six field recon data. Now ask yourself this question, how long does it take you to farm a heroic control point with four directives? Because that's how I get the extra two field recon data. For me, it's going to take me about 10 to 15 minutes. If, I, if I'm by myself, it might actually take less. If I'm grouped with other people, it will take longer because usually the other people are lower than me, weaker than me. They don't do as much damage as I do, or they're not as skilled as I am, but there are more enemies spawning. And because I'm a higher level character, the enemies tend to focus me more than they focus the weaker players around me. So it actually, when I farm with other people in my clan, it actually is costing me farm speed, but I'm happy to do it because I'm lifting up other people around me and we're all getting the benefit of the experience. Now, the difficulty is offset by the fact that more enemies spawn and everybody in the group gets the same experience. So if there are 10 enemies by myself and there's 20 enemies with one other person and 30 enemies with three people, the experience is going up because each of those kills is adding to the experience pool. But the payout at the end of capturing the control point remains the same. So in terms of time, I can do more control points by myself because there are less enemies. I can knock out the control points quickly, reset my entire city and knock them out again. If I farm with other people, that actually takes me longer. But there is more experience to go around. But when you're higher level and you're in a clan, I feel obligated to help the people that are uh, less fortunate than I am or haven't played as long as I am. That's part of being in a clan. Someone helped me once, so it's my turn to pay it back. But this 37 field recon data, that this one upgrade, which is a half a percent improvement to status effects, 37, I'm going to pull up a calculator here really quick, 37 divided by 6, 
616. 37 divided by 6 is 616. I have to do 6 control points to afford this upgrade just for the field recon data. That doesn't include the cost of the holsters. It doesn't include the cost of the tactical assessments. It does not include the cost of the shade calibration. Just to cover the field recon data, I got to do six control points to improve this status effects from 9.0 to 9.5. I still do it. Um, I can't do it right now because I don't have the field recon data. So this is why I tell people experience matters. Get your watch up because all of this becomes so much easier when your shade level is above 1,000. And we have little secrets that we do. And I'll shoot a video on, on what we do to farm New York so that people have an idea of what goes on. But this video was about showing you why. There's so many places to optimize roles. There's so many places to spend the resources and to re recalibrate, right? So for this one, I'm probably going to recalibrate this. I'm going to find the same, uh, what was that, holster? It was an electric holster. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now because I can afford this. So look here, recalibration is very cheap. It's going to cost me some credits. It's going to cost me 70, uh, that's ceramics. And it's going to cost me 61 electronics. This is a very cheap cost. So I'm going to change the skill tier and I'm going to make it weapon damage on this holster that you just saw me optimize. And by the way, I recommend if you know you're going to recalibrate a slot and that's the slot you want to change over and over again on your piece of gear, that you recalibrate it as quickly as possible. Why? Because once you recalibrate a slot, you can't recalibrate anything else. And once you recalibrate a slot, you can't optimize it. And therefore, you can't do what I've done in the past and make a mistake and forget what your plan was for that piece of gear. Now I know what my plan is because this little icon right here tells me I intend to switch hit this core attribute, weapon damage. Now, I may go back and watch. I'm going to do it right in front of you just because it's that cheap of a cost. I'm going to put the skill tier right back on. That's the same skill tier I just took off. Now it's skill tier again. But what I've done is I've made this the flexible slot. All right? But I actually do want it weapon damage. So you just saw me blow through some resources needlessly twice for the sake of this video. But that's because that cost is so low, I don't care. Optimization is the much greater cost. Recalibration, you can make builds flexible. And maybe on a, a particular version of a build, I want another skill tier, or maybe I want the 15% weapon damage. I want the flexibility in this slot, so I'm illustrating to you, that's what you use recalibration for. These slots, I want to maximize. I want to maximize the damage because once this piece is maximized and the other five pieces are maximized and the weapon is right and the skill tier is right and all the little things are working together, that's when a build becomes devastating and very fun to play with. But it takes a lot of work and everything has a cost. But the cost, you've got to think of in terms of time. Now, let me show you something. So you saw me burn through a bunch of resources. And you see that I have no more watch points to spend on this agent. So I'm going to log out of this agent. Now, I tell all of you folks, get to shade level 1,000. Get to shade level 1,000. Then we'll move on to the next step. Well, the next step is to have four agents, all level 40. So this is my mule, and I'm going to log into my mule really quick. And the only thing I'm going to do on my mule, I'm not going to show you all the stuff he has, but he's holding all the stuff that I can't fit on my main agent and all the stuff I don't want to fit in my stash. Basically, he's holding stuff for the weapon types that I don't farm with a lot. Safe area detected. So... Here's all the exotics that I haven't upgraded yet and I'm not interested in upgrading. Here's a bunch of SMGs, some assault weapons. Uh, there might be some rifles in here and there's some shotguns. You almost never see me play with a shotgun, but guess what? If I pick up one with God rolls or near God rolls, well, I'm probably going to keep it in case I ever change my mind and decide I want to do a shotgun build. And where do I put those items? I put them on my mule. I put them on my second agent and his whole job is to hold a bunch of stuff he, he's holding 145 items in his, uh, on his person and in his backpack that I'm not going to use anywhere else. But here is the real benefit to this guy. I've been farming on my other agent. Well, as my watch level goes up on the other agent, it also goes up on this agent. So this guy has scavenger points to spend. Here's another 42 scatter, scavenger points. And what do I need? 
I really need some field recon data right now. So, bam, there's 84 field recon data. And I'm not just going to do it on this guy. I'm going to do it on the other two guys that I haven't logged into, hopefully, since I earned those uh, 48 points or 44 points or whatever it was. It's taking a long time to log out here, aren't we? So this is my third agent. My third agent is not really a mule, although he has some gear on him that's interesting. He's my alternate agent. So if I want to farm all the control points, I'll do it on agent one. And if I want to farm them a second time, I'll do it on agent three. And the reason why I'll do that instead of repeating them on agent one is because I get to reload all those chests. And so he's got he's got some gear. He's got some gear on. He also has this is the gear he was given at level one. Yes, I keep that. And he's keeping my level 30 gear. My level 30 gear is what I use to farm New York, which is something I will cover in another video. So you'll see this again in another video, so I'm not going to go too deep into it here. But for right now, remember those 42 shade levels you just saw me spend on my mule? Well, I'm going to spend them a second time, and I'm going to go, bam! And there's another 84 field recon data. And I'm going to log off of this guy. Now, remember a moment ago, I only had like four field recon data or something like that. Those 42 shade levels are what I farmed yesterday and earlier today. So I let them build up until I need them. This guy's got nothing. This guy's ready to be deleted, by the way. He's my fourth agent. I only use him for farming New York City on story, which this guy has already done. And the only other thing I will use him for is the weekly project to get... I can do this shade requisition project four times a week because I have four agents. This guy's already done it, but in four hours, the server's going to reset, and I'm going to do it again. So that's this guy's job. He's to provide me with one exotic every week, and he allows me to spend my watch points these 42 here's the same number 42 scavenging points i'm going to spend it all over again and look whoops that's credits make sure you get your cursor in the right spot there we go field recon data bam and now i'm going to log off of my fourth agent and i'm going to go back to my main agent which was the stuff i was upgrading And the resources are shared across all agents because there's a blueprint you can buy from Anaya in the White House. You, you go to her and you buy a blueprint and it says shared account materials. And there's another one that's shared account blueprints. And you buy both those blueprints. Safe area detected. And now I can go back to the recalibration table. And I can pick right back up on whatever piece of gear it was that I was optimizing. It was a, it was a golden gear, right? Whoops, it was expertise I was doing. And it was a Golan Gear, which is further down, Golan Gear. And it was this pair of knee pads. And look, now I got 258 field recon data. So you saw me spend what I had, which is about 74, and I went down as low as I could, but I didn't have enough to keep going. I ran out, but I had all those watch points in reserve. And now I can take it up to level 11. So in the course of this one video, you have seen me take that one piece of gear, this golden piece of gear. It was no expertise at all, and now it's expertise level 11. And now I mark it as a favorite because this is ready to go into whatever build I want to put it into. It's been fully optimized. It's been recalibrated so I can switch this uh, to whatever. I actually, I want weapon damage here. And if I use a weapon damage with status effects, and now I'm going to get some things. And if I wear two pieces of golden gear that are this way, I will also get some passive armor regen, and that allows me to get kind of a well-rounded build. So that is why we want all the materials. This is why we want all the experience. The experience levels push our watch above 1,000 so that each new shade level is one scavenger point. Once we get to shade level 1,000, then we want to get four agents to level 40. And 
when we have four agents that are level 40, we get to spend each scavenger point four times. Not just once, but four times. The agent that earned it and the other three agents get to spend it. And then if that's not good enough, we're going to run out of materials, of course, right? Well, that's why we farm New York. So we can delete our fourth agent, recreate our fourth agent, boost to level 30, go to New York, farm New York on story, take you about an afternoon, and then you get to spend your entire watch points all over again as if you never spent them. In my case, my watch is 5,386 as I shoot this video. If I were to go to New York on my fourth agent, 800 points of the watch go to things like critical hit chance and weapon handling and so on and so forth. The remainder of these 5,386 points go to scavenger points. Do I have a calculator up? 5,386 minus 800 means I get to spend 4,586 points. Now, if I times that by 2, that's the equivalent of 9,000 field recon data. Now, I don't need 9,000 field recon data. I'm going to need other materials. I'm going to need polycarbonate. I'm going to need uh, carbon fiber and all the other things that I need to upgrade things for optimization or expertise levels. But that's what we use it for. Right now, I needed field recon data, and you saw me leverage the points on four different agents to get that field recon data. And in the context of... Uh, in the context of this video, I took one piece of gear from no expertise at all, all the way up to expertise level 11. Let me put on, uh, before I forget, <laughs> I want to put on the build. I don't want to walk out of the White House with the wrong build on. So I have other, I have other uh, gears that I want to do. Maybe I'll do it in the context of this video. Let me change this. Scroll down. Let's see what a good candidate. We'll see how far I can upgrade the next piece. Uh, all right, this negotiator's dilemma, I want to get it to 11. I don't think I've been working on anything else. Okay, we'll do that negotiator's dilemma one. So I go down to negotiator's dilemma. I never use the chess piece, but I'm like, well, let me upgrade it. And then I, you know, in case I ever want to use the chess piece, I have all six ca so all six pieces of the set. I, I never use the chess piece. I almost always use a yellow chess piece. But the other day I was thinking of a build and it's like, oh, I really do need that negotiator dilemma chess piece. Where is it? Here it is. So all the other ones, look, you can tell I wear negotiator's dilemma a lot because I've actually spent the cost to upgrade all of these to level 13. For the most part, let me do that one to level 13 really quick. All right, now they're all level 13. And that's just for, so I don't feel like I've been picking on anybody. And now I'm going to take this one from level 3, expertise level 3 to 4, the chess piece. And I think I can take it all the way to 11 without running out of field recon data. But I'm also burning off all that excess protective fabric. I think I'm going to take it all the way to 13. Then I'm done with that set. All right. So now I have six pieces of Negotiator's Dilemma, all level 13. You just saw me burn through the resources like it was nothing. And I still have 199 field recon data left. That means I can still upgrade some other stuff. So now I got to look at what's... Uh, um, I, I pulled all the pieces onto my guy that I might want to upgrade. Looks like this Cheska Vroba is my next. That's a good candidate. So is that. Uh, the Bellstone. I want to... I actually want to spend... I want to optimize this Bellstone before I do anything else. I've been, I want that Bellstone glove for a build I'm doing. By the way, this is what I mean by rainbow loot. Here's a, I, I put this in here only for the example. One blue, one yellow, one red. Now, I'm going to recalibrate this one to either red or yellow. But it came rainbow looted because by default, Bellstone Armory comes with a blue core. And it's got blue sets. But I can use recalibration to change that to yellow or red. And because it's recalibration, I can change it one way. I can change it back depending on whatever I'm doing that day. All right. But I'm going to recalibrate this. So I'm going to recalibrate this critical hit damage on that Bellstone holster. And then I'm going to jump down to, I got some Bellstone gloves, I think it was. 
Bellstone gloves, and I want they're they're all red. They got both damages, and I want to optimize those. So I'm gonna go into optimization. I'm gonna burn off some more resources. But I'm doing this in the context of one video because I want you to think about your own gameplay. Would you be able to do what I'm doing? Would you have access to the resources that I am burning through right in front of your eyes? If that answer is no, then maybe you'll understand why I harp on my clanmates all the time to stop chasing exotics, stop chasing named items, and chase experience. Because when you look at that, I just fully optimized that piece of gear, and there was another piece of bellstone. It was a holster, was it not? I want to do the critical hit damage here. I'm burning through. If you slow down the video, okay, I just ran out of field recon data. Remember, a moment ago I had 199. Now I'm down to 30. So in the context of this one video, you watch me start with 70-some. I think it was between 74 and 78 field recon data. I spent all of that. Then I spent all of my shade level uh, scavenger points on field recon data, got it up into the 300 range or almost 400 range, and I spent all of it again down to the point where I have none left. So that's a lot. Now I can probably still go in and do some expertise. So it was Bellstone I was just working on because expertise doesn't cost as many field recon data as optimization does. At least I don't think it does. So that's done. That's done. This is the one I was just working on, but I'm not ready to optimize it yet. But down here is not those gloves. Those, these gloves. I just spent a lot on this. So here, the first so many levels, there's no field recon data. It's burning up protective fabric, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. Okay, so that's why I'm going back in here because now I'm spending those materials. And I'm not even batting an eyelash at how many materials I'm burning through. This is what materials are for. And by the way, when I say you should do it this way or you should do it that way, Agent requesting I want you to understand something. I was a mathematics major in college, and I was a senior systems analyst in corporate life. So I know how to analyze a system and what it's doing. And I can usually figure out the math inside of what's going on. So look at this. I just took this pair of gloves from zero expertise to 11 expertise in front of your eyes. And you watched me optimize, finish optimizing these. And I think I had already recalibrated this to weapon damage. And this is a pair of gloves I've been itching to use in builds because, look, I can get some passive armor regen. I can get some armor on kill. And I got three red attributes here. And I can put it in a glove slot. I don't have to use my chest piece. I don't have to use a backpack. I can shove that piece into any red build, give myself some passive regen. Now, an ideal copy would have critical hit damage and critical hit chance. But, hey, headshot damage. I'll, I'll live with it. I can live with both damage bonuses. So that's a triple damage bonus on what is normally a blue. I'm getting I'm getting a blue set bonus, right, if I put it in a build. But I wanted you to see how many resources I went through, okay? Now, in a future video, I'm going to show you how to get the resources. I just showed you how to spend the resources and why to spend the resources and hopefully how to prioritize where to spend the resources, how to think about your gear, what to keep and build around and what not and why and what not to keep and, and what to look for a better copy of because not all bonuses are the same. Don't chase God rolls. God rolls sometimes are good for you, but they got to be the right attributes. Those attributes have to synergize with your set bonuses. And then once you find that, if you have access to limitless materials like I do, You'll be able to upgrade things, and you don't have to be shade level 5,000. Yes, I get more resources than you will because I've been at it longer. That's only fair. I've put more work in. But it's not that the system won't work for you. You'll just have to repeat New York more often. It takes about four hours to do New York on story, and all you got to do is kill Keener and get his watch. 
That's it. That's all you got to do. You kill Keener and get his watch. The rest is you can repeat the process over and over again. And you'll have limitless materials. And then when, if you have four agents and they're all level 40, that's a big one. Have four agents that are all level 40 at all times. That way if you're in an expertise level, or I'm sorry, you're in a shade level on uh, agent one, agents two, three, and four can spend the same scavenger points. You get a four for one bonus. But none of this is worth a damn if your watch level is below 1,000. So number one, get to shade level 1,000. In a future video, I will show you how to uh, farm New York, set it up. There's a couple things there. There's some sticking points, but it's fairly straightforward. And hopefully you got something from this video. We'll look to see you in the game.